India's defence sector. One of the largest across the world, one for which the government allocates billions of dollars. Well, guess who's equipping it with all its high-tech requirements? It's the startup world. And someone who's been tracking all of this is Lieutenant General Sundaram. Former director of two key DRDO labs and currently the advisor to the National Design Research Forum. We found various areas for recce, surveillance, detection of uh, explosives, detection of uh, bio biological elements. And uh, when we looked at different people, we found there are many young groups, startups, who can do this part of the work. The advantages of uh, doing it in India are, first of all, the domain knowledge is your own. And uh, number two, you know whenever something uh, goes wrong, how to set it right. Number three, the cost is much, much less. Advantages which have helped startups like Serial Innovations, a Bangalore-based startup in the field of imaging systems. Serial Innovations creates cameras and imaging analytic solutions which are used for surveillance by the Indian Defence. So we manufacture this uh, Fuser uh, product called Fuser. Uh, this, this is meant for enhanced vision systems for uh, military vehicles and aircrafts for poor weather landing conditions and for nighttime driving conditions. Then we make this product called Surround Vision. Uh, this Surround Vision is meant to generate panoramic views in real time for again for uh, defense vehicle systems. And uh, we, we have another product called CamEye. Uh, this is a visual analytic system that generates uh, alerts from cameras based on the anomalies that it detects. For these cameras to capture images during combat operations, they're generally mounted on unmanned ground vehicles just like this one, a product of Mumbai-based Robosoft Systems. An unmanned ground vehicle which could have saved multiple lives during 2611. Robosoft manufactures multiple robots for the industrial sector and it's now foraying into the defence space with its unmanned ground vehicles customised for use during combat situations. The unmanned ground vehicle is customised where you can uh, launch the machine by throwing. It's pretty rugged and can land on its wheel and nothing will happen to it. Plus you have a very good uh, video transmission system where it can run in day or night and it will be very clear to the soldier. The other advantage is that there is a GPS on board where it can show its location of uh, where it is. From unmanned ground vehicles to those which are used for surveillance underwater. Ahmedabad based Britbots is a startup which makes underwater robots like Hydra which acts like a surveillance submarine. It's more of a surveillance robot because it can go inside the water, it can swim. It works on a submarine principle. So uh, this robot has got a camera and lights and you can control it while sitting outside. This robot helps in finding out the condition of the tank and then planning and strategizing and then putting the bigger robots for operations. While most startups are still in its early stages reaching out to the various sectors of the defence, the opportunity is there for all to see. Over 70% of the procurements for the Indian defence sector happens through imports, a market share Indian startups can easily eat into. A case study they can take inspiration from is the US, where 70% of all procurements for the defence space comes from tier 2 and tier 3 companies. In order for this to change, there are certain challenges that they must, however, overcome. The long cycle that these guys have, so once you con even conceive a product, project for example for defence sector, it goes through a long process uh, of DRDO where it goes under tenders and there's a you, it takes the life, the cycle of the project goes up, there's a, to start the project is around one year or so. That's not the only one. In terms of fundraising, 
Many believe that venture capital might not be the best way to go. Venture capitalists would not have the patience because many of this uh, development takes uh, three to four years minimum and uh, for a total system to come out maybe as much as seven to eight years. So, but we have funding agencies. We have, for example, the Aeronautical Research and Development Board. We also have another program called the NP Mass for Smart Systems. So, the R&D funding for these startup companies, I would say, must come from these initiatives. Challenges which Indian startups are no doubt working on. One thing though is for sure, given the extent of innovation in the space and the increase in defence budgets, one can look forward to a lot more action over the next few years. And it doesn't stop there. In fact, the next big thing is going to be biosensors. Sensors which can sense biological and chemical weapons. Now that's the next big thing that all these startups are working on. Time for another very quick break right now on the show, but when we return, iPaperclip.com with their completely paperless tendering solutions.